Hi, I'm Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments. This short video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. In this video, we're going to take a look at a special document prepared for the TI Inspire that I found really effective for introducing students to polar coordinates and graphs. Calculus is often the first time students see polar coordinates. I've turned to the first page of this document and you can see that it's been created to have a couple of windows. In one window we have a couple of sliders. One controls the radius and the other clicker slider controls the angle. The angle is expressed in both radians and degrees. Now over in this other window we have essentially what might be called polar graph paper consists of circles of constant radius and lines of constant angle. Now here's how it works. We have a point that's driven by those sliders in the other window. Right now we have a radius of 4 and an angle of 45 degrees or pi over 4. If I change the radius using the slider, you'll see the point move out farther, or we can bring it in closer to the origin. In fact, we can make the radius negative, which means the point will be reflected through the origin. Okay, I'll go ahead and return this point to a setting of r equals 4. Similarly, we can change the angle using this clicker. If I increase the angle, advancing it, notice the point is moving counterclockwise. And if we decrease the angle, that's going to move the point clockwise. And in fact, you can see we can even move into negative angles. Now I'm going to go ahead and return this point to its original setting which I believe was theta equals 45 degrees or pi over 4. All right, well that's how it works and it's really a means by which you can introduce students to the idea of polar coordinates with some dynamic polar graph paper, if you will. And in case you're wondering, these lines are actually function graphs where the slope is expressed in terms of the tangent of the angle it makes with the positive x-axis. Okay. Well, let's move to the next page of this document, which is going to be one that we can use to draw polar graphs and trace them with a radial arrow. So now I have my theta slider or clicker up here at the top, and this is a readout of the radius of a trace point along the curve. Now this particular curve, let's check it, Yes, R1 of theta is just theta. This gives us this nice spiral. And if we now return to the graph and trace it using these sliders, you can see that as I increment theta, you'll see a radial arrow pointing to the corresponding point on the polar graph. In this case, R of theta is just theta. So the r value matches the theta value as we trace around. You can also see the x and y coordinates of the point. All right, let's go to the graphing window and actually change our r function to something more interesting. Let's use the example from question 5 on the 2018 PC exam. One of the two polar curves given, besides just the circle of radius 4, is this function, 3 plus 2 cosine of theta. So I'm replacing r1 of theta with this new function, and I'm pulling theta off the special little menu here. There we go, and I've completed the polar function definition. Let's graph it. And there's that shape that we saw on BC question 5 from 2018. Now I'm going to increment theta, or move it rather, to the 
point where this curve intersects that circle of radius 4. And this value is pi over 3, or 60 degrees. And that's it. So you can see what this document provides is kind of an enhanced polar graph paper for students to be introduced to polar coordinates and graphs. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.